Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and today we're going to be looking at uh, do, setting up something like this. Yeah, so basically we have a string, sorry, we have a signage uh, that is swinging around uh, as it's tied uh, with the, these ropes and uh, when something hits it, uh, it kind of swings uh, back and forth like that. And uh, if you increase the velocity or force with which uh, the string is uh, hit with, it should break like that. Uh, as you can see, because the first object doesn't have enough force in it, it doesn't break and I can see uh, this velocity is also not enough for the second object to break it. But uh, if I increase its velocity, it breaks uh, the, the signage as you would expect it to work in real, in real life. So we're going to set this up using the rigid body system in Blender. So open up a new project. And uh, before I set up this, because it's a bit complicated, uh, let me first explain uh, the concept and uh, then I can show you how I set up uh, the, the entire thing. So we, we're going to need about three objects. We're going to need a support and then uh, the signage and uh, a rope. So in, in Blender, there is no way to set up a rope like you'd expect it to be in real life. So you have to mimic a rope using uh, different rigid body objects uh, that are connected using a hinge constraint. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, this is going to be our signing. Just create a new project and uh, don't delete uh, the default cube. Let's use that. Uh, so select, select this cube, Shift D, duplicate it. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be our uh, support, and this is going to be our uh, signage. And uh, so they all have to be rigid body systems. So the first one is going to be a rigid body system. Let me play back as this as I'm connecting this. So the first one is going to be a rigid body system, uh, but so of a type passive, so that it doesn't move away, move anywhere, but still interacts with the rigid body system. And the second one is going to be a rigid body active. And that's what you want to have. Let me also reduce uh, the timeline uh, to about 150 frames. Uh, but uh, right now it's falling due to gravity because it has nothing connected to uh, to our to our base or support. So uh, add another cube. Uh, this is going to be our rope. And uh, since uh, scale it down to the scale of a rope, it doesn't really you don't really have to scale it too much. It's something like that. And I duplicate it a few times, three or four times, depending on what you want. Maybe I'll make this one a bit shorter, like that. Uh, now, if you play back, nothing happens. I want to have all of these uh, rope objects. Make them rigid body by going under object, rigid body, active. And uh, if you play back, they will all fall down. So let's start by connecting them together uh, to this uh, main object. So select uh, the first object and then the next. Go to object, rigid body, connect. Now this is this here is connected to this. Now if we play back, it won't fall down because it's connected to this. And uh, let's do the same. Connect this to this object, rigid body, connect. Uh, if, you right, if you right click any option, you can give it a shortcut uh, or add it to quick favorites, which you can access by pressing Q, and uh, that should bring up uh, those uh, uh, the options. So if I select this and this, so what I'm going to do is go under Object, Rigid Body, Connect, and then right click Add to Quick Favorites, so that I don't have to go through that menu. I'll just click Q and uh, have that option added to my Quick Favorites. So if I select them, this and this, Q, press Hit W, hit Q, then I can add a connection to that. Do the same for this and this and that. Now, if I play back, you can see they're all in the same place. Now, if I add an object to hit uh, this, this bottom part, so if I add a um, Suzanne monkey and I animate it. Give it a rigid body system and 
uh, pass active, make sure it's uh, type of active. And uh, if you wanted to respect uh, the timeline and also uh, use the, t the animation you have added as the initial velocity, uh, just animate this value here. So make sure it starts with animation, with animation on and the animated on, and then a few seconds later, you disable that. You can see, and just, if you bring these frames together, you're essentially increasing the size, the speed of uh, the object. Let me reduce the timeline to about 100. So right now, we don't have that swinging uh, effect uh, because if you look at, uh, at the constraint type we set for these connections, uh, they're all set to fixed, uh, which will have them fixed in one position. Uh, so let's add Select all the connections, and instead of using fixed, change the type to uh, to point. Uh, this will enable them to rotate in any direction. Uh, but right now, this option has only been enabled for the selected for the active object. So to have it uh, shared between all the selected objects, just right click and uh, copy to selected. Uh, that means that uh, all these uh, the setting is now applied to the other objects. So now, if I play back and see get that. Now, if you don't want uh, this to go through this object, you just select uh, the connection that connects the two and uh, turn on disable, uh, turn off disable coll coll collisions here. And, uh, and we'll have something like that. So if you add more connections uh, in between here, so if you say, let's see, let's see, if I add a loop here, hit V to separate this and uh, select this object, hit P to separate it and reset their origins also need another connection so I've just duplicated this and uh, just select this connected to this it's not really working very well I think I need to check my connections so this here this should connect this object to this object so and check this is cube 5 and cube 4 so it should connect cube five to cube four. And uh, for this here, you should connect this to this six and four, six and four. And uh, this six and three should connect, you can see it should connect this here, should connect six and three, but uh, in our connections here, uh, because I duplicate, I made this from another object, uh, the connections are wrong, so I need to connect this to this. I can see. So if you want the rope to, be, to behave in a more rope way, uh, you just need to add more connections like that. And I uh, can see. So this would also need another hinge around here. So you, then you do the, sa the same thing and subdivide hit V to separate that, then control L, P to separate this and origin to geometry and again add more connections, add another connection right there and again this should connect to this, this connect to, connects to that, just make sure all the connections are right. So, and uh, if at any time you want to break the connection, say you want this connection to break at around here and uh, at around this frame, 
and you want uh, it to break from around here, you just find uh, the connection that is connecting that. I think it's this here. And uh, then you turn on breakable here and at that frame, make sure you actually make sure that uh, you reduce uh, the threshold at whatever force uh, that is necessary to break that. So if I put the threshold to zero, uh, that means this will break instantly, uh, but I only want it to break after it swings for a few seconds. So I'll put the threshold to back to 10 and uh, at around frame 20, I want it to be to start breaking. So if you play back, see, and then it breaks. So uh, for this here, what I did here, because I, I knew that uh, the force that is coming from here, from this object, will be enough to break uh, a threshold of 10. I just turned on break, breakable and uh, yeah, essentially it, it was able to break it. Uh, anyway, that's how you set uh, that up and that's how you make this part break uh, from this part. And uh, you can use two ropes to, you can have two ropes connected to a single object uh, like, we ha like we did here. So you just have to set up one rope. Uh, let me make sure that I don't have keyframes turned on. And uh, let me scale this on the x-axis and also this on the, sorry, on the y-axis. I'll just select these connections minus uh, the, other, the, the other objects. You just duplicate them like that. Okay, I think they should also be in position like that. Yeah, so we still have the break, the breakable. Like this. I don't need to, these to be animated at all, so let's see. Okay, I have these mixed up, so I need to bring them back to position. So the hinge uses these uh, connections as the pivot point. So make sure that uh, they are in position. They are supposed, they are exactly where you want them to be. So that's why you, you see I'm moving them back in place. And you see now we have that swing. So let me just reanimate the position of this to be coming on that it can hit it from the side here. Yeah, so that's what I did here. Same setup. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.